Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching The Shining. What do you know about this? So I think this is like a classic horror. Definitely a classic. Um, and I think there's probably gonna be a lot of things that we recognize just from Existing. Spoofs. Yeah, spoofs, yeah, and existing, like, just seeing a picture or something. Yeah, yeah, so I know it's Jack Nicholson. Right. And then we're going back to Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. So the I guess the first film that we watched from him was Full Metal Jacket. Right. Which was definitely an experience. Yeah. It was an intense film and it really was, you know, kind of two movies in one. Yeah. So I'm really excited for this. I think the only thing that I would know is that Jack Nicholson, I think, is like the villain of the movie. Yeah. Neither of us have seen this, but we know that one scene yeah, there's like the scene where he like goes crazy on a door and then he's like, here's Jimmy or Johnny. Yeah, he says a name. I know I've seen that in like things or family guy or something. Yeah, we've seen that spoofed before. So we know that that's going to happen at some point. I didn't know that it was this movie until I was putting together the schedule and on the movie poster, it's like his face in the door, right. the broken door. Right. So then I realized that was this movie. <laughs> so now we need to experience everything around that yeah. super iconic scene. Yeah. Because I don't know what leads up to that or what comes after that. Yeah, is he always crazy? Is he a serial killer? I, I don't know, is yeah. that in the beginning? Is that in the end? Yeah. I, who knows? Yeah, so, so I'm really excited though. Yeah, I'm really excited too. The Shining won our horror Patreon poll. So we want to thank all our patrons for voting on this. So if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we have reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all of those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Already starting off with some ominous music. We are in the middle of nowhere. Nothing but trees and mountains, like a ski resort. Yeah, kind of more expecting like a log cabin type of thing. So young. Right. Mr. Allman? Yes? I'm Jack Torrance. Oh, well, come on in, Jack. So oh, it's not a vacation. It's an interview for a job, I assume. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to go and live in that hotel for the winter? It always takes a little time to make new friends. What about Tony? I don't want to call him Mrs. Torrance. We're all going to have a real good time. Listen to Tony. Jack is uh, going to take care of the overlook for us this winter. What line of work are you in now? I'm a writer. Our season here runs from uh, May 15th to October 30th. Seems to me that the skiing up here will be fantastic. Yeah, right? It's a 25 mile stretch of road. Gets an average of 20 feet of snow during the winter. 20 feet of snow? Such a perfect location, they close it for winter. The only thing that can get a bit trying up here during the winter is a tremendous sense of isolation. Five months of peace is just what I want. Charles Grady is the winter caretaker. He must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. Killed his family with an axe. But, uh, both barrels of a shotgun in his mouth. Jeez. You can rest assured, Mr. Ullman, that's not gonna happen with me. As far as my wife is concerned, a confirmed ghost story and horror film addict. Every woman loves murder. <laughs> Tony, do you think that'll get the job? He already did. Ooh, I, I don't like Tony anymore. Tony seemed fun and friendly at when they were having lunch. Didn't seem good at all. Tony, why don't you go to the hotel? I don't know. I'm Tony Tony. What the hell was all of that? He just imagined all of that? Yeah. Yeah. Was that Tony telling him? Can you remember what you were doing? Talking to Tony. Tony's his imaginary friend. Does Tony ever tell you to do things? I don't want to talk about Tony anymore. So Tony definitely has some sort of hold on Danny. Mm-hmm. Did Tony's first appearance happen to coincide with your arrival here? I guess Danny started talking to Tony about the time we put him in nursery school. And then he had an injury, so we kept him out for a while. And... What sort of injury did he have? 
Yeah, I was just about to say. He dislocated his shoulder. My husband had uh, been drinking and used too much strength, and he injured Danny's arm. Wendy, I'm never going to touch another drop. He didn't, and he hasn't had any alcohol in uh, five months. So he's an alcoholic who abused his child. Hmm. She's cool with being alone with just him for five months. In a location that no one can get to yeah. once it starts snowing. So Tony must have like manifested Dad? himself once that abuse I'm happened. I'm hungry. Hey, wasn't it around here that the Donner Party got snowbound? What was the Donner Party? <laughs> Just a fun party. They got snowbound. They had to resort to cannibalism in order to stay alive. He's not pulling any punches with his kid. <laughs> I don't I don't like this family dynamic at all. No. Those are the elevators. Is, uh, yeah, Colorado it's not the lounge. same hallway, oh, though. Cute. Also, whoever the actor is for Danny is doing a fantastic job. So it has to be the dead children, right? Yeah. This is our famous hedge maze, but I wouldn't want to go in there unless I had an hour to spare to find my way out. The site is supposed to be located on an Indian burial ground. That's not good. Culture guys all over again? Yeah. See, the snowcat operates very much like a car, and it won't take you long to get the hang of it. They're setting up all of the things that are going to happen. Right. A maze. A maze, that car. This well, hotel's massive. This is our gold ballroom. This is Dick Halloran, our head chef. I think it'd be a good idea if you could show Mrs. Torrance the kitchen while I continue on with Jack. This whole place is such an enormous maze. I feel like I'll have to leave a trail of breadcrumbs every time I come in. Do you like lamb, Doc? No. <laughs> no. French fries and ketchup. Well, I think we can manage that too, Doc. We call him Doc sometimes, you know, like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons. But how did you know that? Well, anyway, he looks like a Doc, doesn't he? Nah. What's up, Doc? What's going up with this chef now? How'd you like some ice cream, Doc? What's happening? I have no idea. There's got to be a connection with, like, Tony and this hotel. You like ice cream, Doc? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, you behave yourself. Should they be alone? What kind of ice cream do you like, Doc? He seems so nice, but I'm... Yeah, he might not be evil. I'm just... There, yeah. He clearly has some sort of powers to communicate with Tony and Danny. Do you know how I knew your name was Doc? My grandmother and I could hold conversations entirely without ever opening our mouth. Why don't you want to talk about it? Who says you ain't supposed to? Tony. Has Tony ever told you anything about this place? Like not to come here? He not remember? It was so bad he passed out. Yeah. The Overlook Hotel here has something about this like shining. Huh, so it has its own powers. Is there something bad here? It's in room 237. Stay out. So the shining seems like, like a gift that some people have or things can have, and I don't think it's inherently bad. I like the sound transition. <laughs> this is a great shot. Just falling all the way through the hotel. Yeah. I mean, if they're already a month in, they're already 20% of the way done. <laughs> when I came up here for my interview, it was as though I'd been here before. As though I knew what was going to be around every corner. So a month and not a single word. What was he even doing? You have to keep American pudding. Oh. Looks pretty complex. Yeah. I think if you keep your hand on one wall and just never take your hand off of an edge. Is that how you get out of a maze? I think so. These shots, man. I know, right? All of these like tracking shots following them around. Like barely see what's around the corner until like the last second. I mean, it's daylight, but with this music and the shots, it's like a scary maze. Whoa! It's even bigger. Right? This like hurts my eyes just to like keep track of them. No. Jeez, Tuesday. <laughs> this music is freaking me out. <laughs> Tuesday's never been so scary. Sunny, it's so beautiful here in Denver today, it's hard to believe a snowstorm could be that close. Oh, snow's on the way. 
probably the first storm for them. Yeah, I assume that feeling of isolation is going to start kicking in. Mm-hmm. This is just like the maze. Yeah. Like you said, kind of being the last to see. Yeah, we're the last to see what's going on. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 237? Don't do it, kid. Thought he was gonna have a vision when he touched the doorknob. Now that I think of it, maybe Tony isn't bad. Because Tony didn't want to come here. Yeah, maybe Tony's just trying to warn him. Finally writing. This music makes everything suspenseful. She's literally just walking up to him. Weather forecast said it's gonna snow tonight. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. Understand? Yeah. Whenever I'm in here, you hear me typing. What the fuck you hear me doing in here? When I'm in here, that means that I am working. Why don't you start right now and get the fuck out of here? He's always so smiley and bubbly. And from the very beginning, you just like felt that he just hated her. Mm-hmm. That's only getting worse. Whew. That was a big storm. It's the same look from Full Metal Jacket. Nah. The first jump was a whole month. Now we're just jumping forward. Days. A few days at a time. Phones don't work. This is KDK-12 calling KDK-1. This is KDK-1. We're receiving you. Over. Are the lines down by any chance? Yes, quite a few of them are down due to the storm. Most winters, they stay that way until spring. Over. I think it might be a good idea if you leave your radio on all the time now. I'm glad she has some communication, ex yeah. especially with the police, I feel like. Yeah. I wonder how far away are they? Right. Ooh. This is an upgrade. Come and play with us. Turn it Come around, Danny. Us, Danny. Forever and ever and ever. I forgot that it was an axe murder. <laughs> it's a lot of blood. Tony, I'm scared. Remember what Mr. Halloran said. It isn't real. Poor kid. I know, right? I'm changing my opinion about Tony. <laughs> I think Tony may help him out. Oh, it's marvelous, Donuts. Help yourself. We haven't seen Jack interact with Danny or Wendy at all. Mm -mm. Not right now. Daddy's asleep. Oh, no. I won't make a sound. I promise I'll tiptoe. No. You make sure you come right back. He already dislocated Danny's shoulder once. Mm -hmm. This was before being secluded. Oh, he is not sleeping. I know, seeing him in the mirror. Come here for a minute first. Do you like this hotel? Yeah. Just waiting for him to snap at any moment. You would never hurt mommy and me, would you? Did your mother ever say that to you? I love you, Danny. Didn't answer the question. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, he already did hurt Danny. Huh? Yes, Dad. God. His smile is not comforting. He just seems so sleep deprived. Yeah. And like you can tell he's just like kind of losing it. The hotel is practically already completely covered in snow. Mm-hmm. Curious what he's writing about. Right? Oh, no. God, I hate these hallways. That door's open. It's 237. Is it? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Hopefully Jack's not in there. We're just not gonna know. Honey. <laughs> 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 
home. It's the most horrible dream I ever had. It's okay. It's okay now. I wonder if he has the same yeah, does, shining. Does he have the shining? Kills you with Danny. Cuts you up in little pieces. Oh, it's Danny holding. Yeah, because he was having that nightmare the same time Danny was in room 237. Mm -hmm. Danny, what happened to your neck? You did this to him. How could you? I don't know if he did. I don't know how he could have done that. I mean, he could have done it and then Danny could have just stayed there and then he went and fell asleep. Regardless whether he did it or not, everything's spiraling out of control real fast. I can't deal with the sounds I and know. the music. You looking for some booze? So. Hi, Lloyd. A little slow tonight, isn't it? <laughs> what the hell? He's lost it. You slipped me a bottle of bourbon, a little glass, and some ice. Did he actually find a bottle? Yeah, I don't know if he actually did. I like you, Lloyd. I always liked you. How are things going, Mr. Torrance? Old sperm bank upstairs. Sperm bank. I can't handle though, Lloyd. I never laid a hand on him, goddammit. I'd do anything for him. As long as I live, she'll never let me forget what happened. I did hurt him once, okay? Fucker had thrown all my papers all over the floor. All I tried to do was pull him up. Saw that? Yeah. Did she lose Danny? There's someone else in the hotel with us. She tried to strangle Danny. Is he imagining this? Which room was it? I wouldn't imagine that she would just leave Danny to go find Jack. Yeah. I don't know what's real or not. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Airports are shut down, stranding thousands of passengers. Highways are blocked by snow drifts. I wonder if he's going to be able to sense that things are going bad. I was thinking. It's got a certain taste of art. Temperatures dropping well below zero. So he clearly feels it. We're inside the room now. I think so. Wendy said she was in the bathtub, right? Yeah. If this is actually happening, he doesn't seem very concerned that this woman strangled his son. This is so tall. <laughs> Soundtrack of like his heart beating. What's wrong with her? Yeah, this is a different woman. Oh, oh my god. No. I legitimately almost threw up. Yeah, I don't... I don't know what's real. That can't be real. I really... I, I don't know. <laughs> Jack? Yes, it's me. Did you find anything? No. Okay, so... That was real. And you didn't see anything at all? Absolutely nothing. What about those bruises on his neck? He did it to himself. Curious why she's no longer suspicious of him. I mean, she believed Danny. Yeah, but Danny saw wasn't correct. Why wouldn't she go back to thinking he did it? There is no other explanation. <laughs> Man, Danny is going through it. Did you say murder? To create a problem like this when I finally have a chance to accomplish something. I am not gonna let you fuck this up. It did not take very long for him to just completely lose his mind. Like a couple months in. There's a family up there all by themselves with a young kid. I'd sure appreciate it if you give them a call on your radio just to see if everything's okay. She's gonna have to get to that radio or he's gonna answer it. I don't know where that room was <laughs> in location to the rest of the hotel. I assume he's gotta be closer to it. So he said he felt like he knew this hotel before. And this whole party is way in the past. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm so sorry, sir. 
I think the best thing is to come along to the gentleman's room. Who are you there? Oh, what a Jeezy. red bathroom. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What do they call you around here, Jeezy? Uh, Grady, sir. Delbert Grady. Grady? Isn't that the murderer? I have a wife and uh, two daughters, sir. Huh? You uh, chopped your wife and daughter up into little bits. I don't have any recollection of that at all. Were the caretaker here? Hasn't been yet. Yeah, I don't think it's happened yet. You are the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker. I should know, sir. I've always been here. So they're like trapped by the hotel? Did you know that your son is attempting to bring an outside party into this situation? Talking about Tony? No. I think he's talking about the cook. It's his mother. She uh, interferes. They need a good talking to. My girls, sir, and I corrected them, sir. And when my wife tried to prevent me, I corrected her. Corrected him with an axe. So I don't know if he's just full blown lost his mind or if this is a supernatural element of the hotel that like keeps bringing the same soul or whatever back to the hotel. Red rum! Red rum! What's the matter, honey? Red rum! The red rum is what you read backwards. Danny's gone away, Mrs. Torrance. Great. I'm gonna say everything's just fine. It's like constant heartbeat of the soundtrack. Didn't say a word, just destroyed all communication. We tried to contact them several times by radio, but they didn't answer. I'll call you back later. Bye. He's gotta know. Uh, now we're just moving a few hours at a time. Yeah. Man. Oh, he knows. Yeah. I hope he's gonna be the hero of the day. I mean, he didn't even hesitate. He just jumped on a red eye. Kind of like you said. What is he even typing? What's the weather like up there? The mountain roads are completely blocked. How long is it gonna take you to get up here? Oh, about five hours. It's all right. Drive carefully. And he's on it. So he'll be there by one-ish. And then he's got to take the snow cat the oh. rest of the way. I have no idea how long that's going to take. Is Danny back? Yeah, I don't know if it's Danny or Tony. I'm just going to go and talk to Daddy for a few minutes. No. Yes, Mrs. Torrance. Still Tony. I wonder if Tony's like shielding Danny from all of this. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna lock the door behind me. I'm gonna lose it if she interrupts him. Oh yeah, he's typing, right? At least she knows how that conversation's gonna go. Jack? She's finally gonna be able to see what he's writing. So, definitely psychotic. Where is he? Yeah, right? He's gonna be real pissed. This is all he's done since the very beginning. Get that bat handy. How do you like it? <laughs> Maybe it was a bat. Danny. Jack's about to just lose it. Yeah. You have some very definite ideas about what should be done with Danny. This is terrifying. You think maybe he should be taken to a doctor. You believe his health might be at stake. <laughs> yes. Physical and mental. You have the slightest idea what a moral and ethical up. principle is, do you? Bear with me. Why? You've had your whole fucking life to think things over. I'm gonna hurt you. Jeez, he's Wendy. so scary. Darling, I'm just gonna bash your brains. Oh, Wendy, run. Give me the bat. I'm oh. going to... Yes. All right. Oh, wow, that really knocked him out. Just lock him in the pantry or something. Yeah. They hit him again. I don't think she has her bat anymore. Oh, thank God. Hey, what are you doing? 
Gonna need to speed things yeah, up here, hurry Wendy. Yeah, up. Just drop the legs and go. Good job, Wendy. Let me out of here and I'll forget the whole goddamn thing. Wendy, just go. I'm gonna go now. Go check out the snow cat in the radio and you'll see what I mean. He just broke the, the snow cat. Man, he was ready for this. Yeah, it's like, how long had he, like, actually lost his mind for? Right. The chef needs to get here quick. Well, it's 4 p.m. now, so the chef is probably already in his, his snow way. cat. Yeah. On the way. I really hope Wendy doesn't let him, let him out. out. Or Tony or Danny. Oh, Grady. I see you can hardly have taken care of the business taunting him yeah you didn't correct them i and others have come to believe that your heart is not in this others i give you my word as like crazy and terrifying as he is it's like captivating performance too mm -hmm. and grady's just let him out how is this even freaking possible the hotel really has to have supernatural abilities to control things Bad what are you doing, Tony? Um, he's the one that writes it? Oh, yeah. She's sleeping very sound. Yeah. Red rum. Red rum. You picked up that it was murder backwards real quick. Well, some of the letters were backwards. Yeah. Oh, my God. You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Good thing he woke her up in time. Oh, that's a tiny window. I don't think she's gonna be able to fit. No. Oh, please don't get stuck. You might be big enough? No, I don't think she moved it at all. She's got nowhere to go. Here's Johnny! Good shit, Wendy. He's close. I wonder if he's gonna see Danny. Yeah, hopefully he sees Danny. I just don't want anything to happen to the cook. Fuck. I feel like his attention's gonna be on the cook now. I mean, I guess he can't really hide outside. Yeah, he freeze. That didn't even close all the way. I feel like this cook is gonna get it now. It needs to get out of there. Yeah. Hopefully he's injured enough to not be able to chase after the cook. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? Oh! Oh, oh no! Just like that. Daddy! God damn it. Any more? Oh, sh run, Danny. Is she hearing all this now? What the f- What the hell is this? There's just some, like, furry orgy or something? Is she seeing things now, too? I don't know. I think the hotel's fucking with everyone right now. Yeah! His limp it makes him even scarier. Oh, right in the maze. Hopefully, because Danny's been in there, he knows where he's going a little bit better. He's just gonna see his footprints. Shit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's just tracking the footprints. Man, this camera work of just constantly following the characters. Wendy, you gotta hurry up. Great coffee, isn't it? This is way more evil than just Jack losing his mind. Ah! Whoa. <laughs> this whole hotel is just a horror show. You realize? Yeah, Danny. Reverse your tracks. Super smart, Danny. Into the tracks. 
Now you're lost. Run back out? Yeah. Jesus. Be around any corner. Just afraid of them still running into each other. Yeah. Oh, she finally made it outside. Come on, Danny, get out of the maze. Get in and go. I sure hope the keys are still in there. Sounds like she got it. Good job, Wendy. Get the hell out of there. What a shot. Oh, what the fuck? He just froze out there? No. We're gonna zoom into a real old-timey photo. 1921. He's right there in the front. What? What does that even mean, though? We got quite a bit to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was The Shining. What'd you think? I... Unsure. I don't know what the hell was going on. I don't know what happened at the end specifically with him being in the 1921 photo, but then also just then it was any of that real? Like, is he just trapped in that hotel and he just he just made everything up everything or... up in his mind? But then like that's so in the future for him to ima have imagined a family. I, I'm gonna break it down to say the hotel itself is cursed mm -hmm. because it's on an Indian bur burial ground. Mm -hmm. He's like trapped to coming back. So like, I, he's just like constantly reincarnated to come back there and have like a horrible experience every 40 or 50 years or something. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I wanna say that that has been the most stressful movie that I think I've ever watched. Like, you can't see it in our reaction, but the entire time yeah, my you're... legs were, like, shaking. You were shaking your legs the entire movie. I was movie. stressed. I'm sweating. Like... And I think both of us think that the shot selections, the camera work, and specifically the, the music, mm -hmm. just everything. Literally just a character walking. The music was just like, oh my god, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, when he's typing and then he rips the page and he rips it at the same time as the music changes. like changes. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, you were just constantly on edge. Yeah, the music killed it, like yeah. out of the park. The shots were incredible, but I feel like just above that was the music and that really set the tone for making this such a creepy movie. Yeah, because it really... I mean, it wasn't scary. There was a couple no. of jump scares. You had a jump scare that really got me. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think the intention was to have any jump scares. I think I was just so like- On edge. On edge. And then when the music changed, it just like freaked me out yeah. and I jumped. So then I pulled you <laughs> and we both jumped. No, that was, I mean, even though it wasn't necessarily like a scary movie. It wasn't a jumpy movie, no. but it was scary. Yeah. Like I was terrified for a lot of that. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're super afraid for Wendy. Yeah. And I mean, I kept going back and forth and back and forth. Like, is Tony good? In the beginning, I was like way anti-Tony. Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like Tony has too much of a like stranglehold on Danny. Yeah. But then as time went on, I'm like, okay, no, I think Tony's just looking out for Danny. Yeah. And I think that was the case. Yeah. But even, I mean, there was times where I was afraid of Danny or Tony when, especially towards the end, once he started repeating red rum, mm -hmm. um, it was like the exorcist. Like he was like a possessed child, mm -hmm. uh, like a literally possessed child. And then for a while was just very afraid of Jack because he snapped so, so easily. Mm -hmm. He would just always snap at Wendy. But then even towards the end, I was afraid of the hotel because the hotel started playing all of these like mind games with Wendy mm -hmm. and she doesn't have the shining she has like nothing was happening to her mm -hmm. so clearly there's there was a lot going on and I I, I honestly don't even know kind of like you like uh, what the hell was the ending like what are we supposed to pull away from that 
I don't know. I feel like even <laughs> the, the longer that I think about it, I still don't totally understand what the time jump there meant. And I yeah. don't even know when this took place. I think sometime in like the 60s, 50s or 60s or something like that. Because they said, what, in 19... I thought they said it was in 1970 that Grady killed his family. Or my, Did mm I have the date wrong? No, yeah, it was 1920s, I believe. Actually, I don't know. Well, well, we'll find out once we go through the edit. Yeah, it just seemed like that was such a huge jump from the 20s to whenever Grady killed. I think it was. I think it was a long time ago because even when he was interviewing for the job in the beginning, he was talking about like, oh, something happened here a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I think there was, you know, I think the Grady incident did happen around the 20s. Okay. So you know, at least three or four decades prior. Yeah. Also, yeah. I guess he's in the photo, but he didn't age. Like, right, that's what I, I don't really understand. Like, I feel like the whole thing was made up, but I don't know. Or maybe he, like, possessed the actual person that came up there, and he never looked like that. Like, if, if he ever, um, like, looked in the mirror or something, would it have been somebody else? I don't... Well, there was some shots that were... were I think that was just to set up the the red rum reveal. Oh, yeah, you're but right. there were some shots of like the mirror and stuff. I really don't know. I, you know, I mean, there's a lot going on. The the shining is clearly there is a connection between the hotel and Tony and the cook, mm -hmm. um, Tony and Danny. And then there's the Indian burial ground, which clearly has an effect on the hotel. Mm -hmm. So, what was it? Was it the shining? that was messing things up or was it the Indian burial ground? Was it that this individual in the past was around the same time of the Grady incident and like his punishment or something is to be trapped in this hotel? Was all of that real? Was none of it real? I, I, <laughs> I mean, I think we're just gonna talk in circles because same. that was confusing. Yeah, and, and maybe it's open to like interpretation, I don't, yeah, I I, it's know. it's either I hope it's open to to interpretation. And we didn't just totally miss. And we the didn't mark. just totally miss some key point or something yeah. like that. There's just a lot of super supernatural elements that were taking place. Yeah. Because even if you wanted to, you could look at this movie as nothing more than Jack, the character Jack, losing his mind. Mm -hmm. um, because clearly there was things that were happening in the hotel that were not actually happening, that were fantasies of Jack. But it like the scene that Wendy saw with the blood coming out of the elevator shafts, that was something that Danny slash Tony saw. Right. So it's like. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. It's more. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. To, what what did they show us that was actually real and actually not real? Mm -hmm. Because even I didn't believe like when Jack was sitting there at the fake bartender having drinks mm -hmm. and Wendy runs up to say like, oh my gosh, there's someone here. I felt like that was a made up scenario by Jack because previously- Why would she leave him alone? Why, yeah, if there's a woman running around the hotel, why would she leave Danny alone? I get it, maybe she locked him into the room or something, but mm -hmm. still it doesn't necessarily make sense why she would leave Danny alone and and come running to uh, Jack to be like, oh, it must have been the woman who mm -hmm. made the marks because previous to that, she was very gung-ho that it was Jack who yeah. did it. So for me, I was like, oh, this is a scenario that Jack is creating to put the blame of hurting his son onto something else. Right. So that whole scenario I thought was fake. And then it played out and Wendy, it went back to Wendy being afraid in the bedroom to be like, did you check it out? Did you check? And then I was like, what the heck? That actually happened. That actually happened. She really did run up to. Yeah. And then like, was that lady decomposing in the bathtub? Like, was yeah. that real? Was there a, a decomposing body? And he went in and he fantasized about seeing some beautiful naked woman. And then he finally realized he was looking at a decomposing body in the bathtub. Like, there's so much in this that could have happened <laughs> yeah. that or none of it could have happened or I don't know. I think at least some things for sure happened that Jack went crazy, killed the cook and and Wendy and Danny escaped. I'm just sad that the cook died like instantly. Instantly. Like, like he not... was like coming to be the hero and just like taken out I mean, instantly. He, he was the hero because he brought the snow cat there. Yeah. But... That's what I was afraid of. Like, 
I feel like the cook knew that something really bad was wrong mm-hmm. because why else would he get on a, plane. on a plane and get there as quickly as he can? And yeah. then once he got there, it was just he was moving around like nonchalant, just like, is anyone here? And then bang, he gets an axe to the chest. Yeah. So I was like, come on. Like, I did not want to see him die. But I mean, he was the hero to bring the snow cat into and the shining was the hero too. the connection between Mm -hmm. him and and Tony slash Danny. And then that was Jack wasn't severely injured. I mean, I guess he got hit in the head. I don't know how bad that head injury was. I mean, then he fell down the stairs. So yeah, he fell down the stairs. Uh, Maybe he couldn't find his way out of the maze. Or something like that, but he... I think that's what it was. Yeah, I assume he just couldn't get out, but, like, he died frozen, like, sitting up with that crazy look on his mm-hmm. face. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this movie was, was wild. That's that's the one thing I'm, like, confident on, is that it was absolutely wild, especially the final, like, 20 to 30 minutes. But like we said, the whole movie kept us on edge. You were stressing out the entire time. I'm still kind of stressing. I know, and I'm going to be thinking about this for a while. I'm going to have to look up what the heck actually happened. Yeah, what, what does di- it mean? Is there some kind of interpretation that, you know, the director or Stephen... Uh, <laughs> Stephen... Stephen. Uh, well, Stephen King, but... Um, yeah. Stanley uh, Stanley Kubrick. I meant Stephen King. Oh, okay. But then I almost said Steven Spielberg. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to know, like, what... What is their interpretation of what this yeah. is supposed to be? Yeah, no, because I, I feel I feel dumb. Like I feel like I missed it. Yeah, and given I I loved it. Oh yeah, I, I did love I, it. I love it, and that's why I'm so yeah. Like I want to like I almost want to watch it again. Yeah, right like, now. What happened? What did I miss? What, yeah. what cl- there has to be more clues or something that were were happening. And we're usually, you know, we're usually pretty good at this. <laughs> <laughs> we try to pay attention, and I feel like. I feel like there must have been stuff that went over our heads, maybe because we didn't know what to look for. Yeah. I mean, I, there was some things that you you nailed instantly. Like, when you saw Red Rum, you were like, oh, that spells murder. Yeah, it's just because it was the letters were backwards, so then I assumed that I had to read it From like right that. to left, yeah. yeah. And then and then in the maze, you were like, oh, the, foot, the, the footprints oh, in the yeah. snow. And I was like, dang, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I immediately just want to start reading up on this. Yeah. Because I, I want to know if there's something that we missed or if this really is just kind of like crazy story and there's not really like a solid end to it, which I don't really think is right. Like, I feel like there has to be, but I don't know. I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. I was, uh, the one thing I, I really want to talk about is I was completely captivated by Jack Nicholson. Insane. Yeah. In multiple ways. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Literally in insane in his acting skills. Insane. Yeah. Like I was uncomfortable. Every time he was on the screen, I was just so uncomfortable. I I was uncomfortable from the very beginning. From the very from the interview. I was just the way he smiled and the way his eyebrows would move and yeah. stuff and just the way he responded. And I was just like, I don't like this guy. Yeah. And then you could tell immediately that he hated his wife. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if he hated Danny, but he had almost no patience for him. Yeah. He had no patience for him. And then we find out why he hated his wife because he did hurt Danny and he hates that his wife, I I think every time he looks at his wife, it reminds him of what he did. Of what he did. Yeah. So even if, I mean, and maybe that's why the wife was so overly smiley and bubbly in the beginning maybe she just was trying her best to keep the situation as calm as possible and and to be as happy as possible so that jack never looked at her and and saw himself right i want to know if he wasn't a teacher anymore like why was it because of the alcohol and the yeah. like abuse like i don't know like he from the very beginning, he just rubbed me the wrong way. The dynamic, the fi- family dynamic was just totally off. Mm-hmm. I liked how it jumped through time. Mm-hmm. Like when there was no snow, it was all sunny and peaceful. It jumped a month and he still seemed pretty fine. He actually hadn't even done any writing for the first month. And then it started jumping a couple of days once it started being snow and the isolation set in and mm-hmm. he just started rapidly deteriorating. And then it went to jumping hours Mm -hmm. in time and like it just 
escalated so fast the right. way that it jumped through time. Yeah. And like, how did he get out of the pantry? Yeah, see, that's why the hotel has to have supernatural abilities because the hotel let him out of the pantry. Yeah. The hotel was like toying with Wendy. Yeah. If they would have done some sort of reveal or something of Jack looking in the mirror and it didn't look like Jack. Right. Yeah, I think that was a stretch that I said that, but. I think, I, I just personally think that that would have been a cool thing because then it's, then it would have been like, it really is Jack as being like reincarnated into different people mm -hmm. every so often being pulled back into the hotel to just go crazy. Right. Super anxious to look up more about The Shining. Yeah. I'm thinking about room 237. They never really said that Grady and his family stayed there, right? And then when the twins were revealed in the hall, they, they were murdered in the hall. They were murdered in the hall. I feel like the person who was giving the interview, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he did say that he like killed them and then put their bodies somewhere. Then he moved them, yeah. So I don't know if he, did he move them to room 237 or is that just something completely different? Yeah. If they were there uh, to watch the hotel over the winter, chances are they stayed in the apartment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just like sitting here and more things are like no, coming to mind. Exactly. But... I'm, I'm, I'm like going through every scene to try to see, did I miss something? Was there, you know, a stronger connection yeah. between certain events or something? I think Stanley does a very interesting job because this could just be totally a mind fuck. I mean, it absolutely was, mm -hmm. but is that, it, was it just meant to purposely just confuse the shit out of you? Yeah. Kind of like, Full Metal Jacket wasn't necessarily a confusing movie, mm -hmm. but it made you feel confused. Mm -hmm. We've never really experienced a war film like that. So after that viewing experience, it left us thinking a lot about mm -hmm. what we just watched. Mm -hmm. And this did the exact same thing. This yeah. is like phenomenal. Like I'm going to be thinking about this for a very long time. Yeah. I just, I need to look this up. I yeah. Like it's, it's just bothering me. And I was, I was afraid that you can't, I feel like you can't really exist as a human being on planet Earth without seeing that image of Jack Nicholson and his face in the door, mm -hmm. or seeing at least two to three seconds of him, you know, saying, here's Johnny, which, I mean, you didn't remember. I couldn't what, remember the name. You couldn't but... remember the name, but I was afraid that because we had seen that image and that few seconds, it would take away from the film. It would film. take away something from mm -hmm. the film, but I don't I don't think it did. I don't think it did either. Like there was so much that happened before that and so much that happened after that 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 was just a little snippet yeah. of the movie. Like yes, we knew that eventually he was going to go crazy enough to put an axe through a door, but I think that was pretty clear pretty early on. I think on. that's exactly what I was just yeah. about to say. Like the movie has a decent amount of foreshadowing mm -hmm. and a decent amount of telling you who these characters are mm -hmm. pretty early on. Yeah. I don't think it, it ruined any sort of suspense that, that the film provided because even us knowing that we were constantly on edge. Yeah. I'm still like uncomfortable. That's a, that's a good way to put it. That movie was just uncomfortable. Yeah. Because there was so much that happened in that movie that it doesn't make sense that it should make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Seeing a kid riding his little toy down a hallway, what about that is scary? But then you stick that soundtrack and that music and those noises over it and it's and you have the that, most terrifying thing. And you have that the way that the camera followed him. Where yeah, he, you're like the last person yeah, to see. Yeah, he would turn the corner and then you would slowly turn the corner and it's just like, please just let me know what's about to happen. So this movie does a fantastic job of making so much normal stuff be just uncomfortable yeah the whole thing was fantastically done obviously a classic and i'm glad that we finally watched it yeah no i'm super glad that was that was excellent yeah and i i'm gonna absolutely spend a lot of time reading and looking more or watching other videos breaking this film down yeah so we have we have a lot of research to do <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully in the comments we get a lot of answers and hopefully we find out a bunch of answers or, or interesting, cool stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, we always get a bunch of really awesome facts and background on the books and the movies. So yeah, and I'm little, yo, this little thing is cool that you missed mm -hmm. or this or that. So just an excellent movie and just, just had an amazing time. So if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all of those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone.
Bye. Bye.